Hi everyone, this is Terakith, and I'm here with another Crossfader Transitions tutorial video for the Actitrack. Um, I put one of these out uh, last year, maybe the year before, about how you can use the Crossfader um, and the track recorders to basically set up continuous looping, which allowed you to change patterns on the fly without stopping the music. Um, generally, it's just a good way to transition from one song to the next when you're playing live. Um, however, I still get a lot of questions on it, and um, it is a little confusing, and I found some ways I think that maybe it can be improved on. Um, to make things a little simpler for people to understand. Um, the biggest problem in the past was that uh, when you set up your recorder, uh, whatever you're going to be recording for this trick, um, to be uh, Source 3 Main, which is how I first recommended it, um, one of the downsides of that is then that's dependent on what the overall main volume of your project is. So if you hold Function and go to the Level knob, um, whatever you sample is going to be dependent on how, what the overall output level of the Octatrack is. So if you show up for a gig and change your um, your main level to say make it louder or quieter for the venue, um, it's going to change what you actually had the uh, the recording volume of whatever you sample, um, which can make it tricky to set up uh, this transition trick so that when you actually go to the recorded sample, it's the same volume as what your original pattern was. Um, so I got some advice from a few different people on the Electron forums and got a couple different ways we can get around this and uh, actually be a little bit more flexible in how we approach uh, transition tricks. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is go to the record setup. Um, I'm recording on track 4. I should mention that. Um, this is my global track recorder. This works on any track. It doesn't matter. Just for my project, this is uh, the way I have it set up. Um, and then I also have track 8 set to be master track. Um, and this first uh, variation on the trick requires that track 8 is set to master. So um, the first thing you want to do if you don't have that set up is go ahead and go into the preferences um, and your personalized preferences and set up track 8 to be the master track. Um, then I'm going to go back to track 4, which is where I have my recorder um, already pre-assigned. And I'm going to go into the recording setup menu by pressing function and record. Uh, like I said before, I used to recommend that source 3 was set to main. Now I'm going to go ahead and change that to uh, track 8. And what this will let us do is sample from the master track regardless of whatever the main volume is. So anything we sample is going to be the exact same volume as what the octa track is currently playing. So it just takes that volume part out of the equation. You don't have to balance um, all your parts perfectly to make sure that um, when you go to the transition, um, the transition recorded loop, uh, it's not louder or quieter than you expect. So again, source three set to eight, track eight to master recorder. And in this example, I have recording length set to 64 because I have a four bar pattern and 64 steps is four bars. So uh, the next step is to assign our scenes. Um, I'm on the amp page here, which is the most important for this. Um, I hold down scene one. This is my basic scene when everything is playing. Uh, the only setting you have to make here is for your recorder track. Um, when you hold down the scene button, this X volume uh, parameter uh, appears. This is for the crossfader volume. Um, on your recorder track, you want to set that to minimum so that when the crossfader is all the way over um, and this track is playing, you don't hear it because this is the recorded loop. Um, we want to hear just the actual raw source tracks, not the actual recorded loop yet. And then when we slide the crossfader over, um, to scene B, um, you want the crossfader volume to be max for that track, and for all the other tracks, you want it to be minimum. And again, track eight's a master track, so there's no setting there. So basically, all that means is that when the crossfader is all the way to the left of scene one, all of our tracks will play back at the normal volume, except for our recorder track, which is where we're recording a continuous loop of what we're playing. Um, that'll basically be silent while the crossfader is to the left. And then as we slide the crossfader to the right, um, all the real-time tracks slowly get quieter and quieter till they get silent all the way to the right. Um, and our playback track um, over here will be playing back at uh, the original volume um, of the recorded loop. So the other thing I've done I think I find a little easier is in the past I used to let the octatrack kind of resample um, in the fly in the background. It was just constantly grabbing a loop and recording. Um, and again, I ran into issues because sometimes that loop would get louder and louder over time or quieter and quieter over time. So now I just grab one single four bar loop and just use that um, for the transition trick. And I do that by setting a one shot recorder trig um, on this track. Again, this track four is what I'm sampling on. So function plus record. If I go into grid mode, you can see um, by pressing uh, function plus a trigger, I set a one shot recording trigger. It's flashing right now because it's not armed. Uh, I can go ahead and press track and enter to arm it. And now you see it turns just straight yellow. It's not flashing anymore. And that means it's ready to record. So what I'll go ahead and do now is the crossfader is all the way to the left. Um, I will go ahead and just hit play. And you can see it's actually sampling and playing back the loop at the same time. 
And because I had a one shot trigger, the recorder actually stopped recording now. It's just playing back over and over again. Um, so with the crossfader to the left, this is just the raw tracks and not the recorded loop. And when I put the crossfader on the right, this is just the recorded loop and not the raw tracks. So now you can switch to your next pattern, your next bank, your next song, um, while this continues to loop in the background. Um, and you can bring in new parts one by one if you want. Um, it's important to remember to make sure that in any other patterns you want to transition to, um, you also set up a playback trigger for this recorder. Um, otherwise, you'll transition to the pattern and it won't know to keep playing um, unless you have loop on, actually. And then it might just keep looping in the background. So anyway, it's a useful trick now. Instead of going for source three on the main, put source three to track eight and use a one-shot trigger. Um, it seems to make things a lot simpler. Um, there's also another variation I've been playing with that's kind of fun. Let me turn all my tracks back on. And in this one, instead of using source three, uh, track eight, I'm gonna use source three set to Q. Um, and this way I can actually choose which tracks I wanna sample uh, in the background instead of just sampling everything that the track is playing at once. Um, so it's pretty simple to do, hold Q and uh, select which tracks you actually wanna sample. Uh, Q tracks blink, just a quick reminder. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and arm this again. And now what'll happen is the octa track will only record the tracks that are actually queued up at the same time. And they're still playing in the background um, as well. So you don't actually, you know, when you queue them up, they don't go silent. Um, you can set it up that way, but by default, uh, it doesn't work that way. So this is actually kind of a really handy trick to say you wanted to use a couple different tracks for the transition. Um, this is a really easy way to do that. So let's do that. And you can see it's recording again. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to just the recorded loop. And you can hear it's only playing back the tracks that were queued up. And now just like before um, with the transition trick, um, I can go to another pattern and uh, slowly bring in other tracks as I need. Um, at that point, it's up to you to determine how you want to use this trick. So anyway, I hope that was useful. Um, just like I said, just a couple of different variations on something I've explained before, a couple of different ways of doing this transition crossfader trick. Um, Personally, I find these two new methods much easier uh, to understand than the first way I showed. Um, they're just more predictable. There's less issues with volume um, discrepancies. Um, and especially the Q method, it's nice being able to actually select which tracks I want to sample um, to actually keep playing during that transition period. Maybe I don't want the kick drum to play or the bass line to play during the transition. Um, and now I don't have to actually filter that out in the loop. I can just not record it in the first place. So some handy little tips. I hope people find that useful. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you guys soon with another video. Thanks.